Well, this is a little different. Good thing I'm not afraid of heights. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of June 21st. Now, I've plugged myself up here in the corner because on today's show, I'm going to be bouncing around between two types of pages. And regardless of where I put myself at the bottom, half of the time I'm blocking the information. Now, I could adjust myself and bounce back and forth, but I have to actually turn everything off, adjust it, and turn everything back on. And that just ruins my flow. I want to keep the flow to go. So we're not going to do that. I'm just going to plug myself up here in the corner and work with it. You work with me. So what we like to do on this show, we like to talk about hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. And I normally know what I'm talking about because I trade penny stocks every single day. Every day I'm looking for stocks that have heat. And I go through a lot of information at the end of the day. And some of the information I didn't get to go through on Friday that I'm going to look at right now. And you can join me. I'm over here at the otcmarkets.com website. And I'm about ready to check out what the hottest OTC penny stocks were on the OTC market. We're not taking any look or gander at the ones on the major exchange. They're going to be completely different. They're in a completely different ball game, a different league. Up on the major exchange, they've got the benefit of a lot more investors who have a ton of money creating a lot of volume for their stocks. We don't have that on the OTC. So the window's a little tighter to look through, but we want to see what's going on. And this is one of the best places I found to find that information. So what we're going to look at specifically are the number of trades a company has had during the day at any point in time that you're checking it. To me, that's vital information. That's actually, to me, more important than the volume. Volume can be misleading. You can be looking at a stock and see a couple big bounces in volume. Boom, 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 and go, whoa, look at her go, look at her go, she's running. Well, there were three traders, so there were three trades. That's it. Well, if you see three or four trades in a stock, you know there's only three or four people. There's no more people than that, and you need people for trades. So I like to find stocks that have over 100 trades. It'd be nice to find one with thousands, and we used to get those back before COVID, but they are rare now. So this is one of the only sites I have found that gives me this information, and they lay it out very easy and nice for us so you can find it quickly, which is what you want to do during the day. So this is what you do. You can come over to this page anytime during the day. It has a 15-minute time delay, so refresh the page when you go to it. And you can find stocks that have a lot of trades compared to other companies. Come up here to Market Activity, click Current Market, and it'll bring you to this page, which shows you the most active stocks across the entire OTC, all 12,000-plus stocks. Up here at the top, you've got the most active, which you can filter out by price, volume, and trades. You've got the advancers here which you can filter out by just stocks over a dollar, stocks over a nickel, or as we like to look at, all the stocks. We want to see the penny stocks, the sub-penny stocks. We want to see them all. So you'd click that button and click that more button, which we're going to do. And if you're a shorter, shame on you, they have a decliner page over here as well. So you can come in over here and you can get the trades. We'll, we'll dive into this so you can see what it looks like. This shows you every stock on the market. So you've got all sorts of prices over here. You know, you got a stock right here at uh, $1,000. It had uh, 70,000 shares sell today, had 40 trades. Now, believe it or not, there are stocks up to $30,000 on the OTC. <laughs> the OTC is not just penny stocks. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got lots of companies here from 0001 all the way up to 30,000 plus on the OTC market. Lots of banks, lots of foreign companies that aren't allowed to go onto the major exchange have to come to the OTC, like Budweiser, EasyJet, L'Oreal, Adidas. They're all on the OTC, but they're on the QX, the best tier, as close as you can get to being on the major exchange without actually being there. So you can put this in order and see which stocks are getting the most trades. And you can just scroll on down if you want to go doing it this way, looking at their prices, looking for those penny stocks, looking for the ones that are taking gains. But, so this one is one, three cents, Buru. We're going to have to check that one. Matter of fact, since we found it right now, 
This has had 1,230 trades in one day. Folks, that's hot. When we get over to the page we're going to spend most of our time on, you will see this is extraordinary. She is at uh, just a little over three cents. She was only up 6% today. She sold 6 million shares. Now, normally on the page we're going to go to, I normally don't go below 30%. Not for any particular reason. It's just where I stop. This one I would have missed. And that is a lot of trades, folks. So let's click this with your right click. If I go to my normal click, I have to start all over on this page. So first thing, Buru, what are they about? Well, if you jump into the description inside a news press, we can probably figure that out. Buru, founded in 2015 as a developer and manufacturer of industrial blue lasers that leverage fundamental physics in their high brightness. That's right. The other company that works with blue lasers, oh, it'll come to me here in a minute. Uh, oh, almost had it. All right, so let's see what we got here. Relative volume. They dropped from 41 million down to 6 million, but they did have an increase. Share structure for the company is pretty decent. It's at 38 million outstanding. Float's gonna be lower than that. The company is making money, but they're not making a profit. They're bringing in revenues and losing a lot of money doing it all the time, regularly. Isn't looking too good. Little bit of money in the bank, about a quarter million. Remember, we got three zeros to add to any of the numbers on any of these charts. About eight million in assets, a lot of liabilities, over 21 million. So we're holding stockholder deficit here of 13 million. What's the reason she's moving? We got a catalyst here. Well, on the 14th, uh, the company appeals New York Stock Exchange commencement to proceed delisting. Uh oh. All right, so real quick, we jump into here. An appeal will stay off any action against the company, just appealing it. I believe they're probably, well, I don't know what this is about. They're a pink. They're not on the NASDAQ. So what is the problem with this company? Are they late filing something? What? Oh, I think it's already happened, folks. Sure has. Right. They're on the pink now. They were on the New York Stock Exchange. They fell under a dollar, were under a dollar for too long, more than six months. Then they fell under 10 cents. They were under 10 cents for more than 30 days, that's too long, and they didn't raise the price up. Now, the only way the price gets up is if we bid it up. We didn't bid it up. The only way the company can get the price up is to do a reverse stock split. They didn't do a reverse stock split. So we are now back down onto the pink right now. Let's take a look again at that share structure. Well, that's why they didn't do a, a stock split. I mean, they could have done a, a one in 10, brought it down to 3.8 million, and that only kicked the price up to 30 cents. That wasn't going to help them. And they can't get the price under or the float under a million. That's illegal. They can't do that. So they were stuck here. So now they are down on the OTC. And it doesn't look like a stock I'd be interested in playing. So now I primarily spend my time on the advancer page right here. I click that all so I get every single stock on the OTC. Click the more. Now the whole page is lined up with the biggest gainers at the top and it just scrolls all the way down and it goes on and on for a very long time. And as I said, I normally go down to about 30%, 25%, but you can go as far as you like. So I've got this opened up for us. What we see over here are the symbols. Anything with a black diamond is something we can't trade because that stock is on the expert market. You may see trades on it that day, that's not us. Those are brokers and marketers. They can bid it behind the scenes. It has nothing to do with us, so we don't pay mind to it. We have our ticker, our price of it, the change, the volume, share volume. Now, this is dollar volume, how much money they've actually generated through the day. This is share volume, and there's the trades, folks. This is my line. This is what I come here for. I can't find this information anywhere else online. Nowhere. I was showing one page that shows like the top 20 of the biggest traded companies, but it doesn't show you everything. And I want to see it all. So here it is, but you can't filter this. It is laid out with the biggest gainers at the top. So you've got to scroll down through here. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of single digits, ones, threes, fives. Look at that. That's 
how many trades the company had the entire day. Here's one with 20, there's one with 30, here's one with 48. So there's a lot of variations here. Now before COVID, there were lots of stocks that had over a thousand trades in a day. And I can't even count how many were in the hundreds. There was tons of them. And then you can imagine there were loads of them with single digits and down in the tens. We don't have that anymore. Just getting over the hundreds is a big deal. Finding a stock two, three, four, five hundred, that's a big deal. Find a stock in the thousands of trades, that's hot. That's a huge crowd. You know that there's no more than three people. If it says three trades, it's not possible to have more than three people trading that stock. So it doesn't matter how many shares were moved. If there was only three people, chances are the party's over by the time you see it. You want a stock that has lots of people. Even if every single person bought twice, you'd still have 50 people here. That's a crowd. A crowd can give you price activity, get that stock moving, get a bidding war going on. So I look for crowds as my token sign for stocks I should be paying attention to. And as I said, there's not many of them. So there's not a lot of due diligence here. So once I find them, I'll show you what we do. We got one here, Cirque. Ah, I'm really not going to look at Cirque. She's got enough trades to catch my attention. She's over 100, 125. Lots of shares, 83 million shares. That's got my attention. What's that? 9,900% gains. You know, the only time you see that is when it's coming up from under the basement. The basement floor is triple zero one. You can't buy a stock any cheaper than that on the open market. But occasionally the stocks will fall under that. Though you have to pay triple zero one. Whatever the price is under that, you have to pay triple zero one. Well, this one was down two more zeros. Yeah, that was down to five zeros and a one. <laughs> you would have had to buy it for 10,000 percent more than its price if you wanted to get on on this. So I normally don't look at stocks with those sort of gains or that price because as a day trader, triple zero stocks don't move fast enough or far enough for me. I will if one catches my attention because it jumps in my face, but otherwise I'm looking for double zero one as my cheapest stock. So that one don't quite cut it yet. Here's one with a hundred price. We're in there. Ah, but she's a double diamond on the expert market. Can't look at that one. We've got some small big traders, if you will. I'm not that bored. I'm not going to jump into them. I'm looking for things over a hundred. There's one. 116 trades, just under a million shares. That's not very much. Price is real cheap. Double zero one seven. She was up 61% today. Oh, I recognize this ticker. Now this is a warrant. It's got a W at the end. It's a warrant. We'll go in and look at it just so I can show you. I just got these shares zzz, maybe a month ago. Alt, I do believe it was ticker A-U-L-T, had a spin out of Turn On Green. Can't remember anything about them, folks. Well, they had a spin out and I got my free shares. Along with the free shares came free warrants. Warrants on the pink? Yeah, warrants on the pink. Now, warrants are meant to buy shares at a cheaper price. And normally they're good for three to five years. I get the feeling that these warrants are for shorter time period. Though they have a different type of stock for that. Those are called rights. Maybe in the next few months you can buy shares cheaper than the actual price. They have rights. So I'm not real sure what the terms are on these warrants. I'd have to check it. I got these at 001. So it's gone up to 0017 for me. And the stock is TOGI. That came on the market at a penny. It's now up to 1.12 cents. So I got these free shares. I don't know if they have anything going on. I haven't heard anything. Most recent piece of news came out in May. Turn on green granted approval of public listing. That must have been when I got my shares. Uh, anything else here? Turn on green endless power team up to expand electric vehicle charging infrastructure. That's right. They are a EV charging company. But I don't know of anything that they're doing right now. I don't see any catalysts here. Um, on my own time, I'll do more due diligence to see what's going on. But why is she moving right now? I think she just had a hiccup. It's just a warrant, folks. Warrants don't get the same sort of uh, 
volume stocks do it's popcorn on and off on and off very little liquidity jumping back over here looking at my gold list over here. there it is what's that <gasps> two thousand nine hundred and eighty six trades that's huge folks that's one you have to focus in on 47 million shares excellent 50 percent up excellent good price just over a penny just under two cents oh that's not good <laughs> i know which company this is i posted news actually i posted this news i do believe penny stocks this is the biggest traded penny stock on the entire otc there are stocks that traded more but not penny stocks i think this is the biggest one and this is fisker she is running on bad news it doesn't make sense I've termed this dark catalyst. We see this a lot. Companies come out with bad news. This one, they said they were going bankrupt. This is an EV vehicle company, I do believe it is. And that just came out on Friday or Thursday, I think it was, where you can't be on the major exchange if you go into bankruptcy. Well, you see where they are. Not just down to the pink, the absolute lowest tier on the OTC, but pink limited. They're delinquent reporting. I don't know what they're laid on. That comes from being laid on financials. They are. MT10Q says we are not filing our quarterly financial on time. We need more time. Well, when you file this, it gives you five extra days. That's it. They filed that on the 13th. They should have had it out on the 18th. They missed it. So now they are delinquent reporting. I have not read anything about this company trying to restructure. This is a startup company. Normally, bankruptcies that don't go total bankrupt are for big name companies like Hertz and L'Oreal. Companies generating billions of dollars. They're already making money. They've got branding. Nobody wants them to go anywhere. So they restructure them to make them work properly. Fisker, she is not that big. She has not got success under her belt. I don't think that she's going to survive, but I haven't done any due diligence. But on this bad news, she jumped 50% bankruptcy and being thrown down to the OTC. Now, we haven't looked at the chart, but in most cases, you bounce up on the NASDAQ on the announcement of the bad news, come back down, then drop down to the OTC with your price dropping with you, and then you do a dead cap bounce. You hit the bottom and you bounce up. Oh, she's running again, and she comes right back down. So you can make plays out of this, but to consider it an opportunity for an investment, I do more research before I jump to that conclusion. This most recent 8K, what is this one about? Is this about the bankruptcy? Uh, they failed to make a payment and that has started the ball rolling. So they're in trouble right now, folks. That's all we really need to know about Fisker. She got a lot of attention. She did have some gains but she is going downhill, going down that drain right now. So she is not a stock that I'd be putting on my watch list. We got one here with just over 100 trades at 108. Lots of shares, 333. Oh, doesn't matter. Look at the price. Yeah, look at that price. Look at that five at the end. We can never pay that or bid that. Try to bid that. It'll tell you, you, you have to go to the next whole number. <laughs> This is what brokers and marketers get to do. They get to buy in between and make profit on a half a move. We can't. And because it's down there at triple zeros, I'm not going to look at it. Scrolling down my line of gold here, look, you can see most stocks do not get a lot of trades. And the ones that get some, it's not a ton and there's not a ton of volume moving either. So you got to be very particular where you put your money. Here's one with 5 million shares. 27 trades, 36% gain at 001 ITOX. She is pink limited, meaning she is late on one or more of her financials. If she don't get them caught up in time, she'll be on the expert market. Once she gets them caught up, she'd come off the expert market, but nobody likes to see that. I'm going to skip that one right there. Um, Humble, 135 trades, lots of shares, 160 million, down there at triple zero. Do you remember Humble? couple years ago, she was hot. It was a merger play. Humble FinTech, I think they're involved with, uh, merged with a company that owned two stores in New York. 
They were two flooring stores. That's all it was. Humble came in and that thing went nuts for a while. Well, those days are long gone. We're down here at 0004 now. Well, there's one at 155 trades. That's not bad. 1.6 million shares. We'll live with that. 30% gains. Nine cents. That's a decent price. BMXI. I'm not familiar with BMXI. What is this company? Let's see what this company does. Brookmount Explorations Inc. is an operator of producing gold properties in the Republic of Indonesia. Okay, is that the only place they are? The company is incorporated in Nevada and was organized for the purpose of acquiring and exploring developing mineral properties. Um, they also acquired uh, Titan Gold Belt in the Yukon area of Canada. Good. And a small property in Alaska. Good. The reason I say that, I really have now started shying away from companies that are solely doing business in faraway countries like Africa, Colombia, Vietnam, South Korea. I've got nothing against the countries. The problem is I can't do due diligence and research properly. If they just bought property over there or opened up an establishment over there or something's going on over there, I can never find information on it. I've got to take the word of management for it. And being on the pink, we're always doing that. And this is where I've lost most of my money, taking the word of management, believing what I read in news presses. When it comes to pink, you better believe the filings. Take what you read in press releases with a grain of salt, a big grain of salt. I have lost tens of thousands of dollars believing news presses and pinks. They'll tell you about a deal, and three months later, after the stock's gone crazy, the deal falls through. And then two months later, they got another new deal, or hot tech, and then that falls through. We will be seeing some rules changing, I believe, in September for shell companies, but pinks we're going to always have to be leery of. So what was the relative volume around this company? She's more than doubled her volume over the last 30 days. She was at about 730. She's at 1.6 today. Share structure for BMXI, pretty decent. Outstanding share counts, about 100 million. Insiders own about a third of that. We end up with 75 million. It's not a low float, but it's not ridiculous. Anything under 100 million is a pretty decent float. Market cap for this company is 9.4 million. They are making money and their revenues are growing. Every single year for the last four years, they have increased along with their profits. Finally, a company worthy of looking at. Quarterlies, yeah, she's doing pretty good. Had a bad last quarter at the end of 2023, got back on track. Staying in the black, pulling in the green, making profits. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company. Little bit of money in the bank, 136000 about 45 million in assets. Oh, hardly any liabilities. 2.7 million. This company's got strong stockholder equity of 42, 43 million. That's looking good. So what's her catalyst? What's got her jumping about 30% today? Brookmount Gold announces updates on PCAOB audit, a joint venture buyout, and a dividend spinoff. All right, now this news is kind of old. This came out April 26. Is there anything newer here? No. Is there anything newer on their disclosures? Uh, yeah, we do have a Form 4 filed here. Okay. Look, folks, we had a spinoff just spoke about. We had a buyout just spoke about. We had the auditing being spoken about. Anytime you do auditing, you are putting yourself in the spotlight for scrutiny. You're making yourself more transparent because you want to move up the ladder. Well, we just saw that news. Now we've got a Form 4. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of company stock. And what we're interested in is when they buy them or sell them. They can get them and lose them in a lot of ways. Well, this is the best news possible. This is Nils. I don't know if that's a man or a woman. That is a CEO of the company, top management. Right there, the code tells me. It is a purchase. They got a P here. We are looking for a P or an S. Anything else and it's something else. So I'm really not interested. This is a purchase for 3.3 million shares at 12 and a half cents. They now have 4.5 million shares. 
Do the math there, folks. They had like 1.2 million shares. They pretty much doubled up, bought twice as many, tripled their holdings, now holding 4.5 million shares. They just did this on the 10th of May. That news came out on the 30th, I believe it was, of April, the 26th of April. To me, the insider knows something we don't know. I would dive into this. I would see if there's any X dates. You jump into it real quickly, folks. All you got to do is let, let your eyeballs roll and look for dates. And dates are things that can pull you in very quickly to find something that's going on. I don't see any dates here that have just pulled me in. But they have a buyout. They got a spin out. You just had a huge investment by the CEO who knows more than we do. And he doesn't want to miss out on any easy gains. And he bought twice as many as he had before. I'd be watching BMXI right now. Haven't done enough due diligence, have we? That's what we need to do. And that's why we do this. So that's BMXI. We're down to 29%. All right, that's about as low as I go, but hey, let's hit this one. That's uh, Ron, ticker R-O-N-N. -N. We've talked about Ron. We got to look at this one. 565 trades. That's huge. I mean, you how many have you seen in the hundreds? Let alone two, three, four hundreds. Not many. That's a rare occasion. So Ron has had 565 trades. Over 16 million shares was up almost 30%, and it is just over half a penny right now. Let's see what's going on with Ron. Now, if I remember correctly, Ron is the company that's dealing with hydrogen. Hydrogen vehicles, hydrogen hubs, hydrogen facilities. I believe they just did a deal with a tribal nation, tribal chiefs up in Canada, if I'm remembering all this correctly. All right, let's see what they say they do here. Ron Inc. is a multinational zero emission hydrogen fuel cell electric automaker and sustainable hydrogen stationary company. Woohoo! All right, let's see what we can learn here. Relative volume. Whoa, she dropped. Dropped hard. Going from 56 million, she lost 40 million shares down to 16 million. But she went up 30%. That's a good sign, actually. Share structure for Ron, we got a lot of shares, just shy of a billion at about 872 million, and we get 632 million of those, way over a half a billion. So be leery, my friends, of a reverse stock split. And when do these happen? Well, we've been noticing they happen when they get real popular and the stock's been running for a couple of days, there's buzz online and they're closing in on a penny. This is normally when you will see a stock split especially if it's already been approved. A lot of these companies have stock splits already approved from stockholder meetings sometime in the last 12 months. They voted on it, approved it, said something like, at discretion of the management, they can do anything from a 1 in 10 to a 1 in 100 stock split. So at their discretion, they can just do it, and they don't even have to tell us about it. Don't even have to warn us. No press release. You should already be aware of it because it was in a shareholder meeting, which is public information. So whenever you get into a company that you think you're going to be in for a while, you're in for a day trade. In and out, don't worry about it. But if you're going to be holding it for a while, go through their 8Ks. Or better yet, just go over to Google. Put in the ticker of the company, the name of the company, and put in stockholder meeting split consolidation. Put in those four words and see what comes up. See if you are holding a stick of dynamite or if you're safe. Market cap is down about $5 million. They've got no revenues annually. they got no revenues quarterly. Very little money in the bank. $26,000. Got assets, about $20 million. Less than half of that in liabilities. So we do have $11 million in stockholder equity. So what are the catalysts right now? Provide shareholder update. Well, that came out on Friday. I would jump into that, folks. Shareholder updates are given by the upper management. They normally talk to you about what they've achieved in the past and what they dream of in the future. These are normally real good. It saves you on time for doing your research. One of our pieces of news here came out on the 10th of June. 
the company to begin discussions in Geneva. I got to expect that's over in Europe about its new hyper hydrogen vehicle to be the successor to its Scorpion hydrogen hybrid. Need some more research there. And let me see. Um, signs of strategic partnership, the first of seven contemplated hubs expected to be worth $350 million within First Nations Canada. There we go. Company announces engagement with PCAOB Auditor. They're getting their financials audited. That's going to make them more transparent, more trustworthy, more reliable. The company has signed a $100 million euro memorandum of understanding commitment targeting their hydrogen vehicles, hydrogen hub projects. And that's what I remember reading the last time. They were talking to tribal chiefs up in Canada. During their negotiations, stirred up a lot of interest in other areas up there, and they spawned more business for themselves. So this looks like it's a good time to look at the company. Dive into this press release. Look at this one here. I like what's going on with Ron. She was really, really hot a while ago, too. So that's how I find stocks that are hot on the OTC market, not based on volume, but based on how many people are trading the stock that day. We're looking at trades. It's an estimate, a guesstimate. But as I said, when you see numbers like a two, you know darn well there are no more than two people there. So if you're going to lose some people, you want to lose them with here. Every single person here could have made three trades and we would still have like 125, 140 people that we're trading with. That's what I'm looking for. And you can come over here any time of day. There is a 15 minute delay. You got to wait for the market to be open 15 minutes. Yeah, I wish it was working before then. And come over here and you'll see hot stocks popping already like popcorn. It's very easy to see the one kernel are the one popped with all the kernels because in the morning all you've got are ones zeros and twos you're lucky if you see a two it is naked over here it looks like a cemetery with all those ones out there all those tombstones and then you'll see one that's got 12 or 21 trades well that's not very many at the end of the day but at the beginning of the day, that's a tidal wave that gives you a head start on the day's runners. And that's why I like this page. And it's absolutely free. You can find it over here every single day throughout the day at the otcmarkets.com website. So thanks for doing some due diligence with me. Hopefully I shared some stuff with you on how to do due diligence, how to find some hot stocks, and hopefully gave you a couple stocks to look at for Monday. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.